Hey, what's up, guys? Um, first off, I want to start by letting you guys know that I am filming this with the LG Tribute 5, so you guys get a general idea of how the front-facing camera is indoors for video blogging if you guys tend to pick up this device. Now, really quick, I just want to talk to you guys about the Snapdragon 210 versus the 410 because there's been a lot of uh, talk about it, like why is the you know, phones with the 210 processor running better than devices with the 410? And naturally, you know, we as people tend to think that, you know, the greater the number, the higher the value, right? So $100 is better than $10, of course. So if you think the 210 and the 410, 410 being in the higher value, you figure that it's supposed to like outclass, outshine the 210 processor. But that's not happening when you have devices that have 8 gigs of internal storage, 1 gig of RAM, you know, lower specs. You take... Two phones, one running the 410, one running the 210, and you'll notice that the 210 seems to push better, outperform better than the one with the 410. So, my thought is, is this, you know, really, it's kind of like taking, um, taking, taking it out of the context of looking at smartphones and kind of looking at cars. If you're into cars, you kind of notice this too. It's like putting in a hell of a, you know, hell of a beast of an engine in a car that's just like a clunker, beat up car held together by duct tape. Do you really think that? You know, if you have a POS car, duct tape, you know, um, using Bondo and all kinds of stuff, just holding that that POS together and then dropping an RB26 DETT motor in there. If it drives down the road 10 miles an hour, right, it's going to do okay, right? You, you kick that sucker into into high gear and, and like blast down the freeway, that car is going to fall apart. And I think that's what's happening with the 410 processor in these low spec devices. Maybe, you know, like... In better ways, if you think about it, the ZT Warp Elite has the 410, and it seems to push just fine. But it has, you know, enough specs to actually support the 410 and allow the 410 to basically process what it needs to and run the Warp Elite so it runs smoothly. Um, with lower spec devices, the 210 in there seems to work just fine. I mean, the only time that anyone's really experienced any lag with the 210, including myself, is when you use graphically intense heavy games. So really huge games. I mean, one of the ones I tried using on the 210 that started to kind of glitch out was Mortal Kombat X, and that thing just was like, yeah, you know. I mean, you still play. You still had a good time playing. I mean, but you can still kind of see, like, um, like, like uh, what was it, um, frames dropped in the gameplay, a little stutter, a little lag here and there. So uh, real quick, if you guys are curious, like, what is the difference between a Snapdragon 410 and a 210, I've got Qualcomm's page pulled up, and I'm going to tell you guys exactly the characteristics. So we'll start off with the Snapdragon 410. Um, it supports up to 1.2 gigahertz quad core. Um, so you can be clocked at 1.2 gigahertz and no higher. Uh, supports 32-bit and 64-bit. The GPU it uses is the Adreno 306. It is, uh, the modem is the Gobi 4G LTE world mode, LTE category four with a, um, up to 150 megabits per second. Now it doesn't tell you the upload, that's the download speeds that it can support up to. So I'm believing, I think the upload should be the same. I think that's why they put just 150 megabits because it goes either way. Uh, for video and audio, 1080p HD and 720p H, well not HD, but 720p. Um, it supports both those cameras. It supports up to a 13.5 megapixel camera and displays. It can support up to 1080p HD. That's Snapdragon 410. Now, for the 210 processor, the CPU can be clocked up to 1.1 gigahertz. It is a quad-core processor. Uh, the GPU it uses is the Adreno 304. The modem is the X5 LTE that uses LTE advanced 10 megahertz times 2 carrier aggregation in the downlink. Cat 4 speeds up to 150 megabits per second download and 50 megabits upload. Global mode support. Video and audio is uh, 1080p FHD and 720p. The camera support up to 8 megapixels and the display support up to 720p. So there's that that's pretty much what you get right there. So yeah, the 410 does um, does have more. It can support more basically. But again, it's like I said, it's like dropping a beast of a motor inside of a POS duct tape bondo held car, right? You know, you can chug that thing down the road, normal speeds, maybe 30 miles an hour. You start hitting like 70, 80, 90 miles an hour and the doors are going to fly off that thing. The car's just going to fall apart. And that's what happens when you put up a beast of a chip inside of a low spec phone. And that is, um, it's not going to run smoothly. Now, if you put it in a phone that has enough support, it has enough RAM, um, has enough internal storage to house big applications because that does play a big function people think 
internal storage is just how much you can you can download in but that's not only true it's you know the more internal storage you have um, you have lots of room to play around with when you download these these really big heavy intense applications and so when you're using smaller storage and trying to cram all these uh, apps that, that you want into your phone it does it does make the phone kind of chug a little bit so there that's the best way I can explain it to you guys and I'm sorry if I didn't do a good job but if I did <laughs> please let me know by leaving me that thumbs up if you have not subscribed right there click that subscribe button on the the mobile app and uh, yeah thanks for checking out today's video and uh, let me know your guys' thoughts what do you guys think between the Snapdragon 210 and the 410 um, you guys can do that in the comment section below my name is Tito with Aloha Android thanks for checking out today's rant and I'll see you guys we'll see me in another video bye